Hey guys, it's Carl, and I've been doing quite a bit of traveling recently. If we look back at the last couple days, or I guess the last week, we did Turkey and Montreal, scroll back a bit further, Miami, and in the next 10 days, I'm actually heading to New York and Vietnam straight from there. So close to 75,000 kilometers in the span of a month, and I kind of wanted to do a what's in my camera bag vid because this is the one bag that I bring with me to shoot all of my content. I've tried to make it as mobile because if any of you have traveled recently, you know the absolute shit show that's happening in airports. Carry on only, one bag only, and I've tried to condense this into one little pack and um, yeah, it's kind of an updated time for a little camera tour. So going into it, the pack that I bring is this little Peak Design case. It's this little square knit case that essentially has all of my gear packed into this one little cube. And what's really great is these little compartment slots that you can actually rearrange yourself. So if I yank this out, they're all just based off of Velcro. Depending on the size of lenses or some of the gear, you can rearrange these compartments to kind of fit your needs. So there's a couple different ways that you can access it. Obviously the front, which is the way that I showed you, but it also has these little sleeves on the side to easily access, say your camera out of the main slot. And I've had this pack close to three years and there is just maybe some cosmetic damage. But other than that, it has kept all of my gear safe in the thousands of kilometers. And when I used to travel, when I started doing YouTube, I always tried to bring too much. I have packed this down into a very simple and effective bag that only has one camera. So the main camera of choice that I bring is the Sony A7 Mark Four. And in the studio, we're recording right now both on the A and B cam with A7S Mark III's. I find that the four is perfect, not only because it's a cheaper price point relatively compared to those other two cams, it's something that in case something happens to it, I'm not um, biting my mouth and saying I've lost, you know, three and a half thousand dollars. I get it, it's still expensive, but it is on the cheaper end scale. And it also has a higher megapixel count, which makes it better theoretically for both stills and video, because if you just travel with one camera, you wanna have the best hybrid of both. So that is the main cam. It also shoots an S-Log3, just like the two cameras. It color matches perfectly to my other cameras. I think you can tell I am Team Sony. I've just shot with them for so long. I'm used to the body size. It's still relatively small and compact. I know guys like uh, Marquez, you guys travel around with your red cameras. I do not have the capacity, the workflow, or I guess the knowledge, I've never actually shot on a red and I think they're just a bit too bulky for the run and gun style of stuff that I do. I think uh, bang for your buck, Sony's are some of the best cameras and if you are in the market for a full frame camera, the A7 Mark IV is the one that I'd honestly recommend. I wouldn't even touch the A7S III's unless you are solely relying for uh, video use. The lens, which I know everyone asks about which lens do I rock, which lens do I rely on? I have the one lens to rule them all. I swear by this pretty much to everyone that I meet. It's the 24 to 105, it's an F4, and I know that I sacrifice the bokeh or the aperture of the 2.8s. And I've got the Holy Trinity, I've got the 16 to 35, 24 to 70, the lens that Nick's shooting on, the 70 to 200. I've got the trifecta, I think they call that the Holy Trinity of G Masters. I only use those in the studio and I solely travel with this lens for two reasons. One, the versatility. So you've got all the way from 24 to 105 so I can get nice and punched in shots. And this thing right here on the side, it is optical steady shot or OSS. And I know that most cameras or I guess most modern Sony's do have in body image stabilization where the sensor kind of moves around, but the stabilization on the lens itself is so much better and it makes handheld work that much cleaner. So now I don't have to carry around a Ronin, I don't need a gimbal, I don't need a stabilizer. All of my handheld shots for say my Apple event, for when I was in Montreal, for Turkey, for my upcoming trip to Vietnam, will just be done handheld. And for that reason alone, I cannot swear by this lens enough. If you just need a one lens run and gun shop, one lens, like I said, to rule them all, this has to be the one. And inside the rest of my pack, I only actually carry one other. I could honestly go without this, 
but for some reason I cannot get away from my 18 mil baddest. So this, like I said, is an 18 mil. So it's an ultra wide angle lens, great for vlogging. Not that I do it as much, but great for landscape shots. And it's the only prime that I carry in my pack. I've had this lens also for three to four years. I unfortunately have this deadly little scratch on the glass, which we'll zoom up to with a macro shot. I wish there was some sort of cover, but because this is kind of like a fisheye lens, there's really nothing that goes over top. Other than that, I love the baddest coloring. I love the way that this lens looks. Before I rocked the 24 to 105, my actual combo used to be the 18 mil and the 85 mil. Those were the two primes that I carried around, but uh, just for the versatility of this, I've replaced the 85. I know that I miss it dearly, but uh, I still cannot get away from my baddest uh, 2.8. It's just something that I think I'll carry with me probably till the end of time until I switch from Team Sony. Is that a thing? Before we go through the rest of the pack, there's actually something that lives on top of the travel pack usually. So that actually provides a bit of extra rigidity, but it's also the thing that I use to manage all of my projects and all my brand sponsorships. It's the remarkable tablet. So this is a 10.3 inch e-ink based tablet and I am a bit analog or old school in the way that I still take down notes. There's actually a lot of studies that show writing down notes holds better information or there's some weird mapping in your brain that you can retain information better as opposed to say typing. So that's actually why they recommend to students to still use not only pen and paper, but tablets like this to retain info when they're studying. So for all of my projects, for all the ideas that I have creatively for, I guess, these YouTube videos, how I think of these videos to integrate with brands, I jot those all down using this remarkable tablet. It's pretty simple. It gives you a very similar feel to writing on paper and because it's e-ink based, it has a really low latency. And this is actually the world's thinnest tablet at 4.7 millimeters. Obviously right now this is outside of the case and it has the rigidity that you can still jot down notes with one hand. And if you've been tuning into any of my socials, you probably know that I missed uh, a couple of my flights. Traveling right now is not the greatest with all the chaos going on um, in airports, but I did spend extra hours jotting down notes in uh, airport lounges or wherever I could have a seat. And the best part, when I came back to the studio, I was able to transfer all of my notes both through PDF and you can actually transcribe them or transform the text into type text. So you can continue that note on, on say, a computer if you want. You can do things like change the writing input, the overall thinness or thickness of the stroke. You can highlight words if you want. And I've actually used this to sign documents. Once again, I think you guys know that uh, the house build is in progress. A lot of those signed docs have been completed on the remarkable tablet. And the best part probably, the battery life. So you're looking at around two weeks before it needs to charge. It does charge via USB-C. So typically I never have to charge this on my uh, adventures when I went to Turkey for around five days. And this kind of just stayed in my camera bag right on top. And um, I just charged it when I got back to the studio. So if you are interested in this, if you guys like to, uh, you know, jot down notes, the OG style or want to retain that info a bit better, I'll leave a link down below in the description. You can pick up your own. And yeah, I think e-ink based tablets are great and they're thin enough that you can throw into any sort of bag and you won't notice the extra bulk. Back to the rest of the pack you can kind of see that the slots have some sort of method to the madness. I've kind of divided them into accessory zones. So in this, I guess, top left, your bottom right, this is where most of the accessories go. So if I actually just grab a ton of these, we can go through them all. These are mostly just cables for transferring data. So starting off on this side, this is actually just a little XLR input. So because we're recording with it right now, this is actually my Zoom H4n. This is sometimes what I record audio with on top of this little Sennheiser mic. Because we have it set up right now in the studio, this sometimes comes with me and I do set this up in say a hotel room to do any extra audio voiceover if I need. It's a little bit bulky, maybe something that I could take out, but uh, still currently with me. Moving on to my SD cards, I typically use all of my stuff from Lexar. So this is just a spare SD card in case I lose mine, which I always do. 
And uh, moving on to the middle, once again, keeping things Team Lexar. This is just a little hard drive. This is actually a gaming SSD. The reason why I choose this, it just has faster read and write speeds. So 2000 megabits read speeds and 1900 write speeds. And because we shoot a lot in 4K or most of my stuff is in 4K, just having those extra couple seconds to transfer from say my SD card onto here, or even from my computer onto here, just helps to save a bit of time. So definitely recommend this guy. And this last little thing, this is a dongle from CalDigit. This just gets me a SD card slot. I know that my MacBook Pro has that, but it also has extra USB-C, classic USB-A, HDMI display port, and just having an extra dongle around never hurts because I do find sometimes my MacBook Pro SD card slot doesn't work all the time. It's kind of hit or miss. Um, so just having these little accessories, I think these are pretty vital. Moving on to this little compartment that we have in the middle slot. This is where I keep extra A7 Mark IV batteries. These are pretty universal. These are actually the same batteries that work in the A7S threes. I don't typically need as many batteries these days. If any of you remember from the uh, Sony A7R Mark IIs, I used to have those smaller batteries and in a shoot, you would burn through five or six of them in a day. I can pretty much shoot most of the day five, six, maybe even seven hours with just one battery. So I typically just have one in reserve off to the side. Sony has made some huge improvements in the battery game. And on the last compartment slide, once again, some extra little accessories and we'll go through them in this kind of order. If you've seen any videos on my channel, I rave about these little Manfrotto mini tripods. They are so useful. So you can see right now, I do have the Sennheiser little mic stand, which I hold this guy up with, or you can use this to mount a camera. So quickly, I'll take this out. Quarter inch connector on the bottom. This now becomes a very usable vlogging rig. And because the Sony's have flip out screens, I can now see what I'm recording on my camera or to myself, and if I want, I can even set this up on a table somewhere. I can say mount it like that. I can now set up a different microphone somewhere and I have a fully functional A-roll setup that I can shoot videos and I can kind of create this exact setup that we have, obviously minus the lights, minus maybe some of the things with this little tripod right here. So super, super versatile. And the last little accessory that I have kind of going off onto this side, you can kind of see these little peak design slots on the ends of my cameras. These are actually quick release buttons for this camera strap. And now this camera strap, I'm trying to choke myself here. I just made this little X, this is upside down. Need to flip this around. <laughs> I now have a fully functional camera strap and I can choose to tighten this if I need, make it a bit shorter just to show this off. And this little setup right here is also a little camera hack that I want to show because I am shooting handheld. If you use this camera strap with some resistance on your neck, this almost creates a little gimbal style shot. So if you wanna go for panning shots from side to side, this actually becomes super smooth. I have to show this off right now. You can kind of see how smooth these shots are and typically my workflow, I do leave this little bag in the hotel room and when I'm out, say shooting B-roll, I'll just have this slung to the side on one shoulder and I'll still have both hands free to interact with anything. Having this little Peak Design camera strap is pretty, pretty clutch. So for audio, I also have a lav option. And in this little case, I do have the Rode Wireless Go 2. And outside of here, you can see how Medusa-like this is with all the different cables. But what I love about this microphone, obviously the benefits of any lav mic is using this completely wirelessly. And you have a couple options. You can either use this as a standalone true wireless, or you can actually connect an actual lav mic to it. So you can see one that I have here also from Rode, plugging that into the bottom and this little lav mic will sneak through a shirt. Say I'm doing car shoots, this is the exact setup that I would use. So just having different multiple audio options is always super handy. So yeah, that is pretty much the camera bag and all the extra little accessories that go in. There's one little other piece of tech that uh, I do throw in there and it's simply just an air tag because of the value of this bag. There is uh, quite a bit of dollars invested into uh, this pack. I kind of always want to know where it is. I just slip an air tag somewhere into the bag just in case, um, you know, it's so nice to have that extra peace of mind just to locate uh, where your camera is.
I will say, the last little rant on this video, how actually great the iPhone camera is. I know that I've included a ton of footage from just my iPhone 13 Pro Max. The portrait lens has actually been one of my favorites lately. I never thought I would say that, but for Reels footage, for uh, just stuff on TikTok, using the built-in camera has been pretty funny. I just dropped that phone, it's still in one piece. I will already call it in the future that you will only need to take around your iPhone or I guess a smartphone camera. You will not need this giant pack to get really good footage. But until that day comes, that is what's in my camera bag. Hope you guys enjoyed this vid. If you have any other questions, leave them down below. You can pick up the Remarkable tablet down below as well. And um, I will catch the rest of you in one of my next vids or when I am traveling out uh, for one of my next trips. Peace.